I'm finally on the way to pick up my son's ashes. It's been three weeks since he was cremated. I didn't want to leave him alone for this long. Maybe I've avoided it because I didn't want it to be real. Plus, my friend Elizabeth says we're statistically at risk to get in an accident after the death of a loved one. I get it. I don't remember the drive to the coroner's office, and I don't remember the drive home from the Sacramento hotel where he died. I do remember waking up early that day. It was before I got the call that Charlie was dead. I sat on my porch and I wrote just like I always did, letting the morning sun warm me. My granddaughters, Ray and Sunny, Charlie's girls, were coming over to swim in a few hours. They were four and five. It was at the start of another perfect summer day. I do remember getting the call and collapsing in shock. I was home alone and I screamed as rage tore through every cell of my body. And then I had to get up off the floor and drive to Harley's house. Charlie and Harley had two children but no longer lived together. I remember holding Harley close as I whispered in her ear that Charlie died. I held her tight as Sonny and Ray were playing in her backyard, unaware that their dad was dead. After the day Charlie died, the weather changed. There was an unexpected rain, and then it got hot, really hot. Today, I, I'm finally driving to the funeral home, and it's over 100 degrees in Northern California. The last place I want to be is in a car, but tomorrow I fly to Indiana to take some of his ashes to his father, so I have to go today. I'm not familiar with the funeral home. If I were in Indiana, where I'm from, I'd know who to call. I've lived in California for only five years. I moved here to be close to Charlie and my granddaughters. I hardly know anyone in my new community, so I chose a funeral home based on a Yelp review. Simple Blessings is in a strip mall next to a Five Guys restaurant. Charlie would love that. <laughs> Growing up, whenever he got in trouble, I'd go to pick him up and he'd ask to go to Five Guys. First, it was from the grade school counselor's office, then a middle school principal's office or high school detention. Once it was jailed during a spring break in Panama, Florida. Later, I'd pick him up from rehab, for drug and alcohol addiction. Every time I picked him up, he ran to the car waving and smiling, hey mama, thanks for picking me up. Like he'd just been on some big adventure and he'd get in the car and turn the volume way up on the music. I didn't like it loud, so he'd turn it, I'd turn it back down. Then he'd ask to go to Five Guys to get a cheeseburger, fries, and a milkshake. I don't like fast food, so I never ate anything, but. Five Guys was our spot to let Charlie know I loved him, even when he got into trouble. It was hard to be mad at him. He was the baby of the family. Charlie had three older siblings, my children Sam, Lucy, and Willie. After my divorce, when Charlie was four, his dad had three more children with two more women. Charlie went from being the youngest to being in between and in the middle of so much more than just seven siblings. After our time at Five Guys, Charlie would always say to Mama, to, to me, it's you and me against the world, Mama. It's you and me. So I park between the funeral home and Five Guys. It's so hot that I sweat walking towards the door. But as soon as I enter the reception area, I immediately get chills. Their AC is cranked way up. Before I see a person, I notice pale blue packages wrapped like gifts on the front desk. I look closer to the attached card. Charles Griswold, my, my six foot tall Charlie, is now divided into five packages the size of small shirt boxes. This is all that's left of my son? Hey, Betsy, good to see you again. Do you need a bag? Do, do I need a bag? It's Katie who works there. The last time I saw her was when I dropped off Charlie uh, clothes for Charlie to be cremated in. 
a pink Hawaiian shirt and light gray slacks. It's Friday and Katie's dressed like she's going to a music festival. Shouldn't she be wearing all black instead of tie-dye at a funeral home? And that's all she has to say to me? Do I need a bag? No, thanks, I say. I brought a basket. The basket is lined with Charlie's baby blanket. I carefully start putting the packages of ashes on top of the blanket. Any fun plans for the weekend? My son is dead. I'm not going to have a fun weekend. And, and please don't tell me he's in a better place now. This too shall pass or everything happens for a reason. And please don't ever tell me just to focus on gratitude right now. You know what, Katie? Fuck gratitude. I, I don't say any of this to her. But in the past three weeks since Charlie died, people have said some really harmful things. And I'm stunned at the amount of people who ask how he died. Why would you ever ask that? Ask me how he lived. Ask me what made him happy. I head for the exit with the basket and walk back out into the heat wave. As the door shuts behind me, I hear Katie say, have a good day, and my body flushes with rage. The ashes are heavy, so I use two hands to carry him, just like I did when he was a baby in a car seat. I open the passenger door and carefully put the basket of what is left of my son in the passenger seat. The color of the package of the ashes reminds me of Charlie's blue eyes. On his best days, his eyes sparkled like the ocean on a calm day. On his hard days, his eyes were bloodshot with fiery red veins and unhealed trauma. I close the door and walk around to the driver's side, get in and turn on the car, and the passenger seatbelt light starts beeping like there's someone in the seat. So I have to reach over and buckle Charlie in, just like I did when he was a child. I pull his baby blanket over him, and we start the drive home. It's an odd thing to drive alone with your son's ashes. I try to act normal with thoughts that aren't normal. I should have stopped at Five Guys. It's our tradition. Why won't, wouldn't anybody help me get his phone unlocked so we can get answers on who gave him the drugs? I really need to go to the grocery store. I have no food at home. Why didn't anybody listen to me when I raised concerns for his well-being in the last few days before he died? Why was his phone turned off so soon after he died? I wish I had taken a photo of how beautiful he looked before he was cremated. There's the new Trader Joe's. I really need groceries, but I don't want to leave the ashes in a hot car. I don't want to leave him alone. I almost passed the exit for the new Trader Joe's, but at the last second, I swerve and take it and pull into the parking lot and park. I look at the ashes and consider carrying them into the store with me. Instead, I unroll the window a few inches so there's fresh air, and then turn off the car, open the door, and make the choice to leave him alone again. I'll just be a few minutes. I charge through Trader Joe's and quickly get bread, blueberries, bananas, yogurt. I'm ready to pay, but the lines are long, and I'm standing there juggling my groceries in my arms, trying to choose the right line, the quickest line, when suddenly a younger cashier waves me to me and opens a new line, and there's another employee is there with her to help her bag. Hey, how's your day going? The cashier says, oh, could be better. I forgot Trader Joe's employees are friendly and very chatty. Well, I'm here to listen. She smiles and scans my yogurt. I fake smile back. Ma'am, you can tell me anything. She says this like she's begging me to share, and I don't like being called ma'am. <laughs> I look at her name tag. It's Destiny. Well, Destiny, you want to know how my day is going? I just picked up my son's ashes. He died. He was 27, uh, and the ashes are in my car right now, and I just need a few groceries, but I didn't want to leave him alone in the car because the last time I left him alone, 
the cashier drops the yogurt and runs off, and now I'm left there with the other employee. She drops her head and says, I had to put my dog down yesterday. I take a breath. I'm, I'm sorry, I say. What was your dog's name? Lucy. She smiles when she says the name, and I do too. My daughter's name is Lucy. My son, the ashes in the car, has a sister named Lucy. That must have been hard for you, putting your dog down yesterday and having to come into work today. She nods and looks up with tears in our eyes. Yeah, it's been a really tough day. She looks relieved that she doesn't have to fake it anymore. And now Destiny reappears with a bundle of flowers. These are for you from all of us. And she waves a hand across the entire store. And someone rings that damn Trader Doe's bell. And everyone cheers. I take the flowers and blink hard to stop an avalanche of tears. As she scans the rest of my groceries, she says, do you need a bag? Do I need a bag? <laughs> no, I, I'm good. I'll be okay. But that's a lie. My son is dead. I am never going to be okay. We complete the rest of the transaction in silence. I walk back to the car, put the groceries in the back seat, and put the flowers next to Charlie on his baby blanket in the front seat. I shut the door and turn on the car. Hey, mama, do you like them? I look over and the baby blanket has fallen off the ashes. Charlie? I know it was a tough day for you, mama, and I wanted to get you flowers. You're still here? I'm around, here, there, everywhere. I'm still with you, mama. It's still you and me against the world. I just wanted to let you know that I'm okay. Are you gonna be okay? I'll, I'll be okay. <laughs> I cover the ashes with the blanket, press shuffle on Charlie's playlist. I turn up the volume and we finish the road trip home. Bamford's timer, Betsy Murphy.